And lastly, there's a lot of work happening around Wonder Mountain. Some of the buildings in our Alpen area have been removed, Tiny Tom's is getting a new location, so this area is going to look a lot different when you get back. Stay tuned in early April for a special announcement about some of this construction. We think you're going to like it. All righty, I have a really packed um, kind of update for you guys today. I'm going to go over all of my thoughts on this project right now. So if you've seen it, I've covered a lot of my assumptions, a lot of my predictions, a lot of the rumblings that I've heard. And I'm going to structure this all into one video, and I'm going to explain why this is the most confusing project I've ever witnessed so far. So let's start it off. So right before you guys is a construction map that is so up to date. It is updated as of today. I am giving everyone access to all of my information that I can see, that I know, that I've heard rumblings about right here on the map. And I'm going to give it to you guys in such good detail that I'm going to talk about everything that I know that Cedar Fair does and what I see on the map and the kind of picture that it is painting. So let's get right into it. So let's start off with the area in World Expo, okay? That's a really important one, and I'm going to explain why. So we have a major ride removal. It is an upcharge attraction, but it's been there for a while. Um, it was a staple for our skyline, and it's a large plot of land. That has been removed, and it was removed very last minute, um, and that was a part of the change of plans. Again, I can confirm that, and you guys will know this. After the ride is announced, I'll be able to get some interviews and I'll be able to get that information for you guys. So trust me with that. There was a change of plans. It will be exposed. Um, so with that, you have a large plot of land. I circled it a ride removal around it. As of today, those two small buildings next to Skyrider had people measuring the outer perimeter of them and the roofing of them. Very important information. It could mean a paint job. It could mean a retheme. Something is in the works for those buildings. So that tells you there's an area enhancement at most, so or at minimum. So Backlot Cafe, also in this area, is receiving a major renovation, um, a complete overhaul inside, and they've started painting the outside with primer, a white primer, um, which suggests that there's going to be more paint going on. I'm really hoping this is the renovation um, that brings it back into World Expo theming, uh, Ginza Garden. So I'm really hoping, fingers crossed. But as you can see, there's a large plot of land around this ride removal that appears to be getting major enhancements. So that is suggesting that that's going to be some sort of important ride area. So if you notice, if you know Cedar Fair, they work on whole areas. So um, there's going to be a midway, a station, or a major flat ride, whatever it ends up being. Um, and then you're going to have the restaurant near it that can house a large quantity of people. It's going to be getting a Lazy Bear Lodge style system introduced to it, um, which you've heard from me. And yeah, so that suggests a lot right there. Moving on over to the confusing tunnel, which I'm calling it, the restructuring of a tunnel. Um, this is what rumors and what everything points to be a launch tunnel. You have your steel sheets in there between the concrete and the ride area in quotations to prevent any, if you were to picture it, crumble of the concrete if it were to ever come loose. If I'm falling on the ride. They are installing the roof. They are working on the roof. Um, of this tunnel with zero footings inside there. So that kind of paints a picture that nothing serious is going to be going through that tunnel. Nothing with high forces, at least. If it's a part of the ride, it's going to be a slow part of the ride. Nothing with significant forces because the only way for that to be ride related, because right now it's just asphalt below there, um, is for them to either do the footings afterward, which would be really difficult with the roofing installed and installing track pieces. A crane can't slide track pieces in there um, with a roof on. So it would be a, a weird construction process. It's not impossible per se. It's just really difficult. And you would have thought that footings would have gone in place. But if they're going to do a concrete form as the the um, the base of the tunnel, then they can install a, a not high force ride segment in that section. So it doesn't fully rule out a high force ride, but it is suggesting that a, a pretty forceless section of the ride is going to use that tunnel. Um, but again, that is just my understanding. 
Um, and what I've been told from some people in that are engineers that if they haven't put the footings in and it's asphalt there right now and they haven't dug anything and they're going to put concrete down as the base, that suggests that it's a moment of little force. So let's get over to the maintenance tunnel. The maintenance tunnel is most certainly a maintenance tunnel based off of evidence we've seen so far. It's got a little maintenance um, personnel walk area as well as the um, road section, which is very similar to parking garages and all that. Um, no significance there yet for any ride related stuff. So we're going to move on to the electrical restructuring. So Thunder Run's old station, which was used to power an entire segment of track at all times when the ride was operational, is now being redirected as of today towards tunnel number three with some serious wiring and PVC piping larger than what you see when they are um, electrifying a building. Uh, to dumb it down. So after speaking to some engineers that I know from the States and here in Canada, um, this is suggesting that this could be ride related or for some serious building. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on that as it heads towards tunnel number three. There are two big markings that have appeared in the Elpen area in two circular motions spray painted with an inner circle and then an outer circle. Um, these are serious speculative talks that I'm going to talk about right now. So please take this with a huge grain of salt, but this would, I would assume, um, or predict could be auger points. So if that is true, um, they do suggest a larger scale attraction. Um, but again, those could be for anything. Um, it could be something completely unrelated to a ride, but we're going to keep an eye on those two massive auger markings. Um, in the Alpen area. You have tunnel number three, which was the removal of um, Tiny Toms and the redirection of Thunder Run's exit. We have to assume that this tunnel entrance is for a reason. They are building a really nice permanent exit to Thunder Run and they removed um, a pretty popular restaurant, Tiny Tom's, to make room for this tunnel. So one would assume this tunnel is here to stay and some importance to whatever the attraction or coaster or ride in the mountain is going to be. So again, with all this information on the map in front of you guys, it is extremely confusing. It does paint a picture of some sort of coaster or ride going from Extreme Skyflyer all the way over to Elpen and back. But with as little information that we have right now, it is really hard to predict what this is going to be. A lot of people um, are confused or angry that I even brought up the family coaster thing. I have to say there is some evidence of that. But I'm not saying that this is just going to be a family coaster. This could be a high thrill coaster still. But I am just presenting to you guys what I see in the moment um, and what I, that means to me. It, you have to view my channel like science. Um, we see something, we explore it, we talk about it, we test it. If it doesn't work, we move on to our next theory. That is literally what my speculation channel is. Um, and you have to remember, I didn't know what Yukon Striker was until halfway through this summer if Yukon Striker was opening next year. Anyways, uh, moving on to the next topic. Let's go over why I think personally this should have been or could still be a record-breaking attraction. So Wonderland is due for a high thrill coaster. It really is. Uh, Yukon Striker was built in 2019. It is now going to be 2025. That's a six-year gap. We are due for a record-breaking attraction. That is why um, I do think this is going to be a large-scale attraction. Um, and that the family coaster thing is scary to me and it didn't make any sense, especially with a family coaster planned, um, in Whitewater Canyon. Um, but Wonderland also has lost its record to in Canada to p and &E Playland with their new Zamperla launch coaster that was refurbished by Zamperla. Um, so we, we do have to claim that record back. Wonderland is missing a fast and low to the ground inversion based ride. So they are due for one of those as well. So it just makes sense that 2025 is going to be that record breaker or that large scale high intense ride. Fast pass sales are highly attributed to larger scale attractions with records or cool features. And fast pass sales are a significant thing to Cedar Fair. There's a lot of importance with it. And you have to build these larger attractions to keep those fast pass sales high. And Wonderland is a park with higher fast lane sales. Um, so we are approaching that year where fast lane sales are probably falling off um, outside of the people that just don't want to wait. And they are going to need that larger scale attraction to keep those fast pass sales high. 
Snoopy's Racing Railway is a kiddie coaster and a family coaster, was in the plans for Whitewater Canyon area. It doesn't make sense to go from Yukon Striker to Snoopy's Racing Railway to then just a larger version of Snoopy's Racing Railway before going back up to a high thrill coaster. But um, I will say, this is just a rumor. Take this with a huge grain of salt. I have heard Snoopy's Racing Railway is going to allow anyone to ride it this year. Take that with a huge grain of salt. That's just a rumor. But there are rumblings that Snoopy's Racing Railway might be upgraded to a family coaster this year. And you can ride it um, as anyone. So, yeah. Take that as a grain of salt. But that is just what I'm hearing. Let's go over some counter arguments with the family coaster assumptions. Families spend more money than other guests. Wonderland lacks a story-based attraction for families and low height requirement rides such as 42 inches. So if Wonderland was offered a family coaster that can fit as little as 42 inches as a height requirement, that is a huge upsell to a park like Canada's Wonderland. Um, and for those of you who don't remember, Wonderland has um, gone under some bad publicity with some rowdy teens and some large scale fights. And this past couple of years, it's affected the park's image. If you disagree with that, that's just concrete facts that the park has suffered with a bad image of being just a crazy unsafe place to visit because of the rowdy teens. So them wanting to go down a more family route to attract more families instead of teens is an assumption that the park is looking at. You can't argue that the park could very well be looking at that direction as the teenagers are causing problems at the park. Tunnel 1 is getting closed off without footings. So this, again, as I talked about earlier, is a serious sign. It shows that, um, for example, if you have a tunnel with asphalt, you cannot dig footings um, afterwards. You want to dig footings beforehand because the equipment that you would need to dig footings needs to go up and down, and that roof is very low. So you can dig footings afterwards, but you can't get that as deep as you would need to for a high thrill moment. Um, the only other option is to pour a concrete slab as the foundation to that tunnel, which isn't um, unheard of, but it would assume it's either a very um, not so high force moment or it's a family coaster like, um, for example, Guardian that could be bolted into a slab of concrete. Um, that doesn't have high forces. So you have to look at it that way. That is telling. Um, and I'm just presenting the information that I've been told by some of my engineer friends as well. So those are my counter arguments to a high thrill coaster that, again, those are the reasons why I'm looking at a family coaster option. What are some of my Zamperla assumptions? If you didn't watch my video yesterday, Zamperla has three projects for 2025. That was confirmed in a podcast that Zamperla did. Um, and two are kitty coasters and one is a family thrill coaster, um, a family thrill launch outside of the USA more specifically, and it will get worldwide attention according to Zamperla. If family thrill is not for Wonderland, then that means Wonderland will not be getting a Zamperla launch by process of elimination based off of what was said in that podcast. I also have other reasons. So watch my Zamperla video yesterday if you want to hear my other reasons for why I think it could be Zamperla. If it's not Zamperla then who could it be? Well, Zamperla is one of the most likely manufacturers that I had on top of my list, um, but it's only likely if a family throw launch is the model. Again, based off of what was spilled on the podcast, um, I don't see why they would hide the fact that they have four projects and they don't necessarily have to give out the model of that four projects. They said three projects for 2025. So we'll have to see what that means. Um, but right now, Zamperla is my most likely manufacturer, but it is starting, it's going to start moving down on the list if we start hearing that there is a family throw launch model rumored for another park outside the USA. Vacoma is another likely manufacturer. Cedar Fair has started working with them recently, and they do offer a high throw launch model as well. We've seen a lot of these models out in Europe and parks out um, on that side of the world. Um, and they do look really awesome, and I would love for a high thrill of Vacoma to be coming to Canada's Wonderland. Mock is another likely manufacturer that I could see Cedar Fair and Wonderland working with. They have the new Striker model, and they are also cold temp operations approved. So I could 100% see Wonderland eyeing a Mock coaster as well. Premier is a likely manufacturer just based off of some rumblings from some very reliable sources I have. So I have to put that on the list, even though personally I do not see it. Um, but I have heard we just haven't seen a really large scale um, option from Premier and they are capable of it. So who knows? Maybe they will go down the Premier route. B&M is likely still there's the off chance that they could go with B&M. I can't discuss why I don't think they will. I'm actually not allowed to. 
Um, but b and I, from what I'm going to predict or speculate um, to you guys, is there was a change of plans with b and and Canada's Wonderland, and they will not be going with b and But who knows? Maybe they're going to go with a different model. But it is very clear that the b and wing coaster looks like it is not the plausible um choice anyways that is all the information i know so far comment down below what you guys think of all the information i just presented to you guys i saw a lot of people confused by a lot of my videos so i wanted to come out in one big video it's almost like 15 minutes now and just present to you guys everything i know everything i think and the reasonings behind it with some maps and some just key points right there on the screen for you to make some logical sense of everything again this is the most confusing project i have covered to date um, but yeah, thanks so much for enjoying the content that I've been putting out for you guys. Um, there is a huge increase in viewership going on with the content right now, and I really thoroughly enjoy it. Um, and yeah, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much to my Patreons as well. You've made growing the channel a huge possible thing. Thank you so much, guys. Stay tuned for the construction update. Bye.